Hey, we've got a new one on the healing bench today. A Hitachi battery charger for a battery drill. It's a uh, NICAD charger, model number UC18YG, and it's good for 7.2 to 18 volt batteries. Uh, this one is on the healing bench because someone, not me, plugged it into 200 volt supply, and being a uh, 100 volt device, it didn't really like it. It went pop. So we're going to see if we can fix it and get it working again, because we do use this in the data centers that I work at. See, in uh, Japan, we use the... Uh, American style NEMA 5-15 uh, outlets and uh, or the 1-15 uh, if they're non-grounded and uh, sometimes we have uh, a different PDUs, a power distribution unit or the um, power bars so most of them if they're 100 volts they use the American style uh, outlets but if we have a 200 volt rack because we've got big equipment or a lot of servers and we need more wattage uh, we'll use the uh, C13 slash C14 plugs which you'll recognize as this style so those PDUs will have the uh, panel mount version of this and uh, then we plug in our, our cable and plug it into the server. Sometimes those racks are 200 volts, sometimes they're not the ones using these because the, uh, the C13 slash C14 plugs don't have a defined voltage like uh, the American plugs, always 100 volts or 110 volts or whatever it is. Uh, these ones can be any voltage, doesn't matter. So without testing you can't tell and uh, one of the other guys use an adapter plugged it in and it went pop because the one he plugged in was 200 volts not 100 volts so yeah it was a bit exciting and uh, now we've got to fix it so on the back I believe yep there's four screws so if we pull those screws out some of these charges are um, a, can work universal voltage my DeWalt uh, battery charger I bought it in Australia so it was you know 230 volt supply when I brought over to Japan, I um, cut off the plug, the Australian style plug, and put a Japanese one on, just like this. Plugged it in, and it works fine, because it's a lower voltage, and the thing is designed to work up to uh, 230, 240 volts. So it didn't mind it at all, but you've got to be careful, because this one, if you look on the bottom, only 100 volts. 50, 60 hertz, because we've got both frequencies in Japan, because of reasons. But only 100 volts, it's not universal voltage. I guess if it's only being sold in Japan, um, or only in 100 volt countries, they're not going to spend the extra money on the uh, high voltage capacitors and whatnot. So, why bother if you're not going to use it at 230 volts? You can save a few cents per unit, and that adds up. Okay, so here we are. We've got the uh, switching transformer. We've got our output diode. This is what's turning the high frequency AC from the transformer back into DC, the high frequency low voltage. Over here we've got our uh, FET, this is a um, switching transistor which takes the DC which we've rectified and turns into uh, AC, high frequency AC, so that this can then drop the voltage down, goes through the uh, diode and then we get our whatever voltage we want coming out. Over here we've got our little pop, you can see it's down in there, I'll zoom in in a sec. We've got our fuse which is also popped. Common mode choke, this is just to stop any noise from the switching functions getting out into the mains. That there is our bridge rectifier, that's turning the AC into DC, and we've got a big smoothing capacitor. This smoothing capacitor is rated to 250 volts, so you might think, well, hey, it's rated 250 volts, why can't I just plug it into 200 volts, or 230 volts, and it should just handle it? Well, not exactly. When you rectify with a full bridge rectifier, a full bridge rectifier, uh, AC voltage into DC, you've got to times that AC voltage by 1.414 and uh, that will give you your rectified voltage. So at 100 volts, um, you're going to have 141.4 volts coming out of your bridge rectifier. If I was to plug 200 volts into here, we're going to have 282.8 or thereabouts. So we're already over the voltage rating of that capacitor. And if it was a 230 volt country, we're going to have 325 volts coming out of our bridge rectifier. So you need a relatively, a relatively high voltage capacitor to handle that. So this is definitely not designed to, um, to handle anything more than 100 volt supply. And um, I'm hoping that everything here went pop before anything over here went pop. But we'll try that. We'll, we'll replace what's gone bang and um, we'll see what happens. So let's zoom in and get a bit of a closer look. So you can see, I'll get my pointer. I'll take this board out actually, there we go. So you can see something's opened up just here. 
and something's gone a bit funny here, a fuse. So there's a fuse we have to replace. That's a, it says here, F1, 3.15 amp. That's a common value, so that's not a worry. I might even have some of those on the shelf we can just solder in. And this here, what is it labelled? VA1. It's a, an MOV, a, a metal oxide varista. This is basically the stop surges. What it does is, if, the, if you get a transient surge across the mains, like someone switches on their welder or something funny happens on the, the lines and you get a, a spike of voltage, this will absorb that, shunt it across and stop it from getting into the rest of the circuit. Because we put a 200 volts at a, uh, a low impedance source, it wasn't able to shunt it effectively. Well, it did for a, uh, a split second and then it just went pop. Because, yeah, it just basically cooked itself. Sacrificed itself trying to save the device. Um, so we now will have to replace that and that as a minimum. This has got a bit charred. The uh, capacitor here, it's just a noise uh, filtering capacitor. So we might not have to touch that. It's just a bit charred on the outside, but it's no, um, no damage to the capacitor itself, I don't think. No, it looks alright. It hasn't split. Oh, hang on, hang on. Looking close. Let's have a look. Nah, nah, it hasn't. That was just a, uh, nah, false alarm. I thought it split, but it hasn't split. So, I wonder what that's rated to. Does it say? A thousand volts. That's good for a thousand volts. So the 200 volts won't have even touched it. So that's fine. Our common mode choke here is just two coils of wire. So when the noise comes in, and the noise, if there's any noise coming in, it will come in on both wires. And they're wound in opposite directions or something. Uh, same direction, opposite direction. I can't remember. From the center out. Opposite directions. So that means that any noise coming in or noise coming out basically magnetically cancels itself out in that little device there. So that's just two cores of wire, nice and thick, so that's not going to be a problem. Our diode, I'll have to check the voltage rating. It's a RS405M, but that's probably going to be okay as well, because uh, it's very cheap to make diodes that can handle a decent amount of power, uh, a decent amount of voltage, sorry. And uh, the only other thing that could be a problem is this capacitor, but it hasn't vented, so I think the pop happened so quick that it didn't have a chance to actually boil the electrolyte and... Uh, vent its guts. The uh, breaker on the PDU tripped very quickly too, so um, that may be okay. I might I might desolder it and test it, but there's not much I can do to test it without, you know, to be sure, except just plug it in and see what happens. So I'll get myself a new one of these uh, varistas and um, the metal oxide varista and a new fuse, and we'll put those in, give this board here a bit of a clean up, and uh, see what happens. I was having a quick look and I found out what the failure mode was. I, I, I know why the fuse has popped. Well, apart from the 200 volts, but I know the mechanism behind it popping. Basically, this MOV is here and here. So our mains comes in, MOV, and then we've got the, uh, the fuse across these two, this fuse here. So we have a circuit from the active through the fuse, across the MOV and then back out the neutral. Normally this MOV is non-conducting, so there's no path from active to neutral. But in an over-voltage circumstance, that MOV conducts and uh, it will shunt any spikes down to ground, or in this case, a huge spike of sustained length and uh, low impedance supply has basically caused a direct short across that fuse, across the MOV and back out. So I'm hoping that in the time that the... Uh, the breaker in the PDU took the trip. We haven't had any sustained voltage across the rest of the circuit because it's been going straight in, across the fuse and straight out. And as soon as that fuse blew, then nothing's happening at all. So we may be lucky and have the rest of the circuit per perfectly fine because it's just looped in and out until things went pop on the main side here. We are done. New fuse in here. I was able to pop off those end caps and then put a new fuse in without having to buy one, especially with the end caps. I just pushed the new ones on. Uh, I took this uh, capacitor out, that uh, filter capacitor out, gave it a clean, put it back in. Turns out that's a 300 volt, not a 1000 volt as I, I thought I could read. I've s spun it around so I could read it a bit better and it says it's a 300 volt uh, X2 class. So even if we put that 200 volts in, that capacitor is still fine. 
no worries. And a new MOV, which I've put a bit of a heat shrink on there to try and encapsulate any potential future explosions, try and contain it a bit. You often see it done like this in um, switch mode power supplies and that sort of thing, so it doesn't spew its guts everywhere and uh, cause problems. You can see just there, these are remains of the explosion on the uh, capacitor. Didn't damage the capacitor at all, and I've also wiped off the, uh, the PCB as well. Uh, the replacement part is a, a Panasonic. The original one was a, a TVR10241, was a part number, and that was good for 2,500 amps of surge, uh, 35 joules. At, uh, it was rated to 240 volts, but the working voltage is 150 volts. Whereas a new one I put in is a Panasonic part. It's good for 3,500 amps one time, or 2,500 amps two times. Uh, and it's a 200 volt part, maximum working voltage of 130 volts. So it's a little bit lower voltage, but the uh, ratings are uh, relatively equivalent. Uh, this is actually a part rated for 100 volt line to line use, so it's no worries putting it in there at all. I've had a whole heap of them on, on my shelf, so that will do it. And a uh, 3.15 amp fuse in there, that'll do it. Time to put the case on, see if it works. Okay, we're all back together in one piece. Time to plug it in and see what happens. Moment of truth. I'll uh, keep my hands away just in case there's a bit of a pop. And absolutely nothing. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. No sparks, no smoke, no funny noises. Alright, got an empty battery. This is the battery we tried to charge when it was plugged into 200 volts, so it's pretty much dead empty. And the LED comes on, it is charging. It's working. Fantastic. Thumbs up. We fixed the charger. Alright, that can be charged ready for Monday's work. Keeping the Japanese internet running nice and smooth. And uh, we'll be all good to go. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Um, if you feel like hitting that subscribe button down below, everyone always says hit the button. If you feel like it, you can do it. If not, just keep watching the videos. I'll be happy with that. And we'll see you next time.